Hello and welcome to vlog number 37. This vlog is filmed in my hotel room and it's a bit of a different vlog because I've not done any terrain this week as I've been in this hotel room in Germany. So there's just a lot of painting minis and not much else. So it's slightly different to my usual ones as I say, but hopefully it's still gonna be interesting to see what I've got up to uh, and I hope that you do enjoy it. Uh, of course, don't forget if you are not yet a subscriber, and so many of you are, it's amazing to me, uh, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to ding the bell and select all so that whenever one of my videos goes live, and that is three times a week now, uh, then you will be informed. So I will sit back and be back at the end of the video. Please do enjoy. Pop any comments you have below. I'd love to hear from you. Always do reply. Uh, and uh, once again, thanks for watching. Hello and welcome to my hotel room. You can see I've got myself a little painting booth set up here, a painting set up, and I've got my painting stuff there. I did bring my lapel mic so that the sound would be better, but it's not working at the moment, which is a shame. I have just ordered myself a Chinese and I'm quite hungry. It's the end of the first day that I'm away. I didn't do any filming or any painting last night because there was no tea in the room and that put me in such a bad mood, literally, that I couldn't even face anything. So I just sulked and looked for tea and didn't find any and sulked more. So this evening, I am going to see how well I can paint in this area. I'm very pleased that at the last minute, I did add in the ring light. It's gonna give me a good illumination while I'm painting, because obviously hotel rooms are rubbish for that. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna paint. It's probably gonna be something simple. My plan is if I do decide to do more on in progress shot filming or whatever, I'll do short clips. And I, I, I may be able to put this camera onto a tripod and film while I'm shooting um, and while I'm painting, but I'm not sure. So we'll see how it goes. Anyway, it's nice to have a setup and to be able to do stuff while I'm away. And um, I will bring you along for this. Uh, next two weeks will be almost entirely painting miniatures. I have managed to get something rigged up with my phone and I will try to run this for a little bit. I don't have all that much battery, so I don't know how well this is gonna work. Most of the time I'll just pop some music on or maybe even skip ahead because I'm going to be eating as well. But I will also attempt to uh, talk when I'm picking colours so that we can do a little bit of a tutorial out of this. Um, which I will release piecemeal but I thought I'd just do a quick segment now just as a test as well. First of all I'm going to start doing a little bit of work on the um, shrine from Drone of Arc. So the first thing is null oil, obviously, as always. And on this, I'm gonna bring my light closer, you can see better, there we are. I'm going to do a light null oil. I'm not gonna try and cover all of it. Probably lighter even than that. Just gonna go into the cracks. Because I feel this is gonna have white stones so we're just going to do a little bit of pre-shading. There we are. We'll leave that to dry. And I'll have some more food. And we'll pick someone else. I'm going to paint these walls from Drone of Arc and I'm going to make use of Game Colors Vallejo Game Color Wolf Grey 72047. The reason I am going to make use of that is these are wolves and the reason I bought this paint was to give it a try on a wolf. So I'm going to give it a go. Let's see how it looks. That is a lovely light grey. I changed my brush halfway through because the 
in the transit the ferrule of this has broken completely and it's impossible to use. <clears throat> the other one I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to put a shade of uh, under under shade of Caraberg Crimson from Citadel. Um, oh, and I'm going to then let that dry and do a very very watered down. So dip it in the paint, dip it in the water, and then just slap it over the whole model. I am experimenting here live on camera as I like to do. So we'll just spread that over the whole model, leave that to dry and then what I'll do is I'll come back later and do the wolf grey on that one when it's dried. Just want to see what difference that makes. Maybe it'll make nothing. Maybe it'll not really show up but it's nice to experiment. So there we are, a little bit of caribou crimson as an undercoat or a pre-shade. One with pre-shade, one without. So I thought I was recording before and I wasn't, so I've almost finished this stage. I just looked up and realised the camera wasn't on. I'm putting colour on with the medium flesh tone onto this 15mm Priest from Drone of Arc. And another thing to say is, this is the first use of my O-size Artis Opus brush. I'm enjoying it so far. But this is a very tiny model. But I'm really done. So you only have to watch the final little bit of this stage. I didn't bring many flesh tones with me, unfortunately. And I also forgot to pick up toilet, um, kitchen roll when I went shopping today. So I'm using the napkin that was given me in my Chinese takeaway. There we are. Flesh tone done. It's a bit darker than I wanted. I hoped I'd brought the light flesh tone, but I didn't pack it. So anyway, I will uh, pick another colour and be back. Next colour is going to be ivory, which is what I'm going to put on his staff. So, unfortunately, my wet palette dried out on in transit. So the ivory that I'd left there for the last application is now just really dry. You did go in the hold though, so I shouldn't really be surprised by that. So there we are. Let's get some ivory from Vallejo onto this staff. There we are, that's done. Now that the under coat or the pre-shade has been done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a very watered down wash of ivory from Vallejo, which is here. And I'm gonna pop that all over the model again. Oh yeah, I'll do. Next up for the priest, or the bishop, or whatever, I'm going for royal purple. Royal purple, and I'm going to put that on his robes. I have absolutely no idea if that is, if that is ecclesiastically correct, but I don't care. It'll look lovely. So, royal purple on his robes. Oh yeah, I'll probably come back and do another coat of that as well. Next up on our friend the bishop is going to be some gold detailing, which is going to be very fine. And this, I haven't yet got the goggles out, but this may need it. 
because what I'm going to do is I'm going to gold detail the edge of his cassock, which I've just done. Purple. Like so. And also the cross on his cassock. So let's see if I can do this without goggles. And if I can't, then I'll pause and get the goggles on, because they're just next to me. This is a little bit of a challenge with my brush control and my eyesight. Let's see how I do. That wasn't too bad actually. Did that all without goggles. And now I'm going to do a little bit more gold just in the detailing on his staff. Oh, yeah. Pretty happy with that. Not perfect. But it's certainly better than I thought I'd do. And I'm going to clean my brush very well now because that's got metallics on it. I'll pick the next colour and I'll be back in a bit. Once again had a problem with the camera, or a problem with my finger not hitting the camera button hard enough <laughs> that it didn't record, but what I've done is I've put some more gold on his hat. It might be a good thing that it didn't record because I got a little bit political. All around here religious. Anyway, right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some white, which is actually the ivory and I'm gonna fill in the gaps on his hat whatever it's called and then I'm gonna come back in later and lighten that up with a touch of off-white this is a baptism of fire to painting in a hotel room so there we are nice bit of ivory on his hat i'm also going to put a bit of ivory on his clothes on those um robes that you can see here but not on that scarfy thing that's coming down the middle there we are let that dry finish off with the white and then I think that'll be me done and I'm gonna go and read because I'm tired it's been a long day the red undercoat is now dried nicely so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get some more of the wolf grey and I'm just gonna paint it over in a light coat hopefully not obscuring all of the nice pre-shading I just did but we shall find out this won't take very long and I'm already really liking it. It's giving it a little bit of a, this wolf a little bit of a twist. There we are. So let that dry, let's see how it works out. Cool. I was not happy with the werewolf and having just seen how well that gray undercoat, that gray, wolf gray worked on the others, on the other wolves, I'm actually now gonna come in and apply it as a really light wash. I just felt that he was lacking something. And maybe wolf grey is what it was. Just to bring him down, make him not quite so red. So let's get that done. There we are, let's let that dry and see how that looks when it's not shiny. I need to put some colour on this priest's hair. So this I believe is tan earth. And I'm just going to apply it very 
finely on his hair. And now finally I'm going to get, let me see what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn, yeah I'm going to get the, uh, going to get some black dark grey and do his, um, this tiny little bit of his, um, whatever it's called, done. So for this I'm going to be using German grey from Vallejo, which is a nice dark colour. And this is, oh, got that caught up. This is going to just be the tiniest, tiniest bit of painting. There we are. Done. I have a little more energy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and put some skin tones on the rest of the miniatures that I have here in 50mm that I'm going to be trying to paint up while I'm away. Now I've got the peasant girl. I'm just going to go and crack along and do these. I won't announce each of the miniatures, but I'm doing all of them in the medium skin tone because it's all I've got. It is also my favourite skin colour. This is the blacksmith. This I believe is the merchantman. This is some kind of mendicant or fry of some sort. It's kind of a Bible anyway. That is actually a very, very hard one. Very difficult that. And now we have some men at arms on which there is no skin. And let's see. Nope, no skin on them either. So, what I'm gonna do is I have this 28 millimeter figure, which I've got very, very, very red. That I'm gonna try and tone down. that is all the skin tone I've got left to do well on these batch on this batch anyway that I've got in front of me so I will uh, wrap that up there I have a short amount of time before I uh, have to go to work which is nice so I'm just going to finish off these two miniatures now which just need to have some washes done I've just had a quick look at them I'm quite happy how they're looking I have bought myself some kitchen roll so now I have a much better more absorbent material for cleaning my brushes on Good have to buy a four pack, so my boss is lucky and he is going to be given three of them. So I'm going to first of all do a very tiny shade of Raglan Flesh Shade on the flesh for the priest. So let's get that done. There we are, not do for that. And then I'm going to use some of my very precious and running out 
Five Works Earth Trade. I'm hoping to get to a Games Workshop on the weekend and pick some more up. That's my plan. There is one in town. But they didn't reply to my message on Facebook asking if they were open. So I'm going to go to town anyway, so I'll try and find it. And what I'm going to do with the Earth Shade is I'm going to put it over the statue inside just to highlight it a bit as it happens, just to kind of bring your attention to it a little bit more than it was already because previously it was just all one single colour. I want this to be really, really simple. I don't want to be overdoing anything on this. Having said that, I've just done way too much. So what I'll do is I'll transfer some of that earth shade over to where I was going to put it on this, which was just on the purple robes, just to fill in those or bring out those lovely sculpted folds. They really are gorgeous figures these. So there we are. Just a tiny touch of Agrax on the purple there as well. Gonna leave it to dry. Have a look at it a bit later. See how happy I am. I'm now going to put some colour onto this kind of like geisha type lady. I'm very pleased with how the colours are looking having put the, the skin wash on and taken away that hugely red colouring but I still also quite like the way the red colouring as a pre-shade has worked. And the idea I've got for this one is she is going to have the German black, German grey sorry which is a very dark grey um, which I already have in my palette from yesterday. And what I'm going to do is that's going to go as her, as the main colour of her of her cloak or her dress or her tunic or whatever you want to call it. So let's get that done. This is actually not the easiest miniature to paint. It's quite hard to get your angles right to get into going like an underneath in here. It's actually quite hard. I think I will compromise and do some of this hood in this grey as well because I think I'm going to be incapable of putting a different colour in there just with my skill levels so that make it a bit easier yeah in a week I'll forget I even made that decision
There we are, that'll do for now. Um, I'm gonna have to get myself ready for work now. So I'll have to stop there. It's nice to get some paint on, having not done anything last night. Struggling again as I did with the, the first time I used these artists opus. I have a stray hair already. I already used it like for four paints. I'm gonna get the uh, conditioner out and try and clean it up. So there we are. All right, let's get this fire mage, whatever she is, started up. And I've been sat staring at her for a few minutes, work, trying to work out what I'm going to do. Um, and I'm still not convinced that what I'm going to do is going to work very well. However, I'm going to give it a go. And if it doesn't, I can always paint over because I'll be using very thin, very thin paints. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with ice yellow from Vallejo and I'm going to put that over all of her because my thinking is is that she will be built up as a being basically made of flame which is going to be a big challenge because I'm not very good at painting paint, um, fire so yeah someone might be shouting at the screen while they watch this going don't do that but I can always change it That was hugely more painful than I expected it to be. This brush, nice massively expensive Artis Opus brush, is really frustrating me. It's not holding its point and it is not helping me out. So, right, I'm going to pick the next colour and I'll be back in a second. Unfortunately, there is some footage which you will never see. I tried out the cheap GoPro I bought from Wish and it's rubbish. So there we are, lesson learned. So what I've done is um, I my brush here is really splitting and being not allowing me to paint very detailed, which is a real shame. So what I decided to do, I want to get something done this evening. It's Friday um, and I'm feeling pretty uh, pleased about the week. It didn't go too badly. Um, so I'm putting some, ba some base colours down on some of my larger models and I'll be heading to the Warhammer shop tomorrow to pick up a new brush. So what I've done is on this particular pirate type character I've done a deep green base coat on his coat. So there we are. So I thought I'd just show you that. I'm going to do another another coat now. It's been a little while. I've just been fiddling around with the with the other camera. It's rubbish. I'll probably throw it away. It was only very cheap 
a huge lesson there. And we have a nice second coat of that lovely rich green on his coat. coat. So I will now pick another model or this one in another colour, but probably another model. I'll be, I'll be back to show you what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to stop filming everything. I'm probably just going to show um, what I'm doing and then what I've done because it will just get boring watching the same thing over and over again. And I'll get bored editing it as well. So uh, that might be the last time I actually, unless I'm doing a proper tutorial, while well, I'm just painting things, there's just no point. For peg leg here, I'm going to do his coat again because it's a big thing in filthy brown what a great name for a color so i'll get that painted and i'll show you what it looks like when it is done there we are that is looking rather lovely it'd be really good when i put my extra shades on and uh, highlighted it a little bit so what i'm now going to do is i'm going to work on his sock he has one sock and this sock this particular sock started off as white. So we're going to come in and we're going to use ice yellow for the sock because that will give it an off colour. Be quite an interesting colour. And I had some on my palette already. I've over watered that, over thinned that. There we are, a little dab on my what's it and that will do that. So I'll get that done. There we are. So I put one coat of the ice yellow on his sock um, and I'll let that to dry now and I'll go and pick another miniature. Next up I'm going to do this beautiful dress on this wizardess. I can't remember the name of the character but it is another one from uh, Reaper Miniatures. And for this I'm going to start off with a thin coat and I'm going to thin this quite a lot of carmine red. So I'll get that done and I'll show what it looks like when it is finished. That is looking really lovely. I'm very pleased with that effect, just with the one single thin coat of the red. I'll come back in later with some different colours and highlight that. But that's pretty much the effect I was looking for. We'll see what it looks like when it finishes, when it dries. I'm now going to do the next colour on this, which is going to be Wolf Grey, which I'm going to put on her hair. I was thinking about blonde, but that's boring. So I'm just going to do Wolf Grey, which I have on my palette already and uh, I'll show what it looks like when it is done. That is wolf grey done on her hair. I'm probably going to put a very light um, null noil and then come back over with wolf grey again on that. But first of all, while I'm in the mood and I'm enjoying this miniature, this is really simple but very lovely to paint. I'm going to put my standard skin che cheesy skin colour, which is a medium flesh tone, like I said in another clip, I didn't bring as many paints as I should normally should have done for skin, which is a bit silly really considering how many miniatures I brought. But as long as I'm careful, this doesn't look terrible, particularly if you put the correct washes over it. So yeah, so I'm going to put some of this on now on the skin um, and I'll show what it looks like. When it's done it might take a couple of coats and I'll bring you back when I've finished with the skin. There we are, that's a couple of very, very thin coats been applied, sorry, got a bit close in, been applied to this particular model. Um, and I'm pretty pleased with how that's come out so far. It's a bit orange, but I should be able to tone that down as I go. So the next thing I'm gonna do, which I'll probably just do on camera, is the very light wash of Null Null over her hair. So just the tiniest amount and use it as a, that's way too much, but I'll spread that around. That'll probably be enough for the entirety of her hair. And I'll spread it all around just to get it into the, into the crevices. And then I'll come back when that's fully dry with the wolf grey again. 
and then that will be a lovely oops I want to face that was very messy that'll be a lovely effect I think so there we are bit of a null noil probably should have done that first as I said but I wasn't thinking I've uh, put it all over her face so better clean that up that's the null noil done on her hair but it's on her face so let's tidy that up There we are. Right, so now I need to decide what I'm going to do next. I feel like finishing this figure tonight. It'd be a good target. It'd be doable if I didn't keep making mistakes. There we are. Right, I will be back for the next stage in a second. This particular one is going to get a silver stuff mainly, and the only silver I brought with me, stupidly, <laughs> was chainmail silver from Game Colour. So I'm going to get that done, and I'll show what it looks like when it is finished. That is starting to really pop now. So I've done the silver on the staff, and I've also picked out her jewellery in silver. What I'm now about to do is one of my favourite colours, which I did bring, I'm sure. Yes, gunmetal blue. However, I have some on my palette, which is what I'm using. And I'm just going to very lightly glaze the top of her staff with this. Just to give it a little bit of a variation, as you can see. Just to make it look a little bit cooler. And does it? Yes, it does. So there we are. A little tiny touch of that. I just had some left over from where I was using it in a different model. And I was able to reactivate it because it's in my wet palette even though it's been on an aeroplane and it's been about a week since I used it. That's pretty cool. So now I need to decide the next thing I'm going to do on this uh, lovely lady. Probably probably the wolf grey. Let's do that while I'm here. So I'm actually going to do this almost as a dry brush. Oh, there goes a uh, police car or something. Ambulance. Just going to draw that lightly over the top of her hair. Almost as a dry brush, but not a dry brush because I've not got a dry brush. I'm not a great painter, so I wouldn't pretend to highlight each individual strand of hair. And this is as close as I can get. It's all about a very light application. There we are. Brilliant. Really pleased with how this is coming out. Probably should try and do her eyes. Probably should have tried to do her eyes earlier. Right, I'm going to try and do her eyes. I'll do them in off white um, and I'll be back to show you the mess I've made when it's done. Okay, so the next stage is going to be Reichland Flesh Shade. I don't think she looks too cross eyed. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply that just over her skin and I'll be back when it is done. And there we are. I'm pretty happy with how she's turned out. Having Worried that my uh, brush wasn't going to be good enough. It's kept its tip a bit better tonight. Still been a bit of a pain. Been a bit hard work than it should have been for the price it was. Um, I might pop in underneath here and put some shade under there. Some cardboard crimson or maybe I'll just go for the same colour as the dress. But apart from that, that's going to do for now. Um, if I have any more ideas I'll come back and add them. But I think that's my first miniature finished while I've been in the hotel room. Another one to start. I'm really cracking on this evening. This is great. So this one is a pirate girl, as you can see. A bit of an elven look, which is a bit odd. I would rather that she was just human. But hey-ho. So she's got boots, a little short skirt, a little crop top, and gloves and a hat. Which makes this... A clear and prime example of where I wish I brought better colours for skin tone, but it is what it is. I'm going to do her skin first, and I'm going to do it with the tried and tested standard of medium flesh tone. So I'll get that done, probably in a couple of very thin coats, like so. And I will bring you back when it is finished. Uh, 
There we are, a couple of coats, very delicately put on, and I'm happy enough as I'm going to be with using that colour. I'm irritated at myself for not bringing all the all of the skin tones I should have done. Anyway, this particular lady is going to have um, blues and uh, dark blues and blues and greens, I think, on her. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got deep sky blue here, um, and that is going to go on her basically on her little kind of top thing there. So I'm going to get that done and uh, I'll show what it looks like when it is done. I think I might do her feather as well. So that's done and I did actually decide to go ahead and do her skirt as well in the same colour because it just looked right. What I'm now going to do is pick out the boot, her boots and her gloves in dark sea blue which is actually probably also one of my favourite colours of the Vallejo range. I will be doing that now and I will show what it looks like when it is done. So there you are, another week done and another vlog recorded and uploaded. As I said at the beginning, I really hope you enjoyed that. It was a bit different and I am aware that normally I have more variety in my videos, but this week and next week's is gonna be a little bit more like that. Though. I have some plans maybe for some terrain next week, so we shall see whether I manage that or not. So thanks for watching. I did enjoy my painting. I'm really pleased I brought all my kit with me. I'm sat at my painting desk filming this now, um, and uh, it's been, it was a really good idea. Otherwise, it would have just been really boring. So it's kept me entertained and interested. So thanks so much for watching this Beer Clipper video, and please stay well, stay healthy, and stay safe.